Ever since she was a young girl, Sally Ride competed with the boys. Whether it was football, baseball, or tennis, the guys didn't care because she was a competitor. And for a while, she even envisioned playing for the L.A. Dodgers. So it was no surprise when Captain Robert Crippen, the commander of the 7th shuttle mission, personally chose Sally to operate the robot arm to be tested around the shuttle for the first time. To the crew, Sally was just another member of the team. And when asked if her fellow astronauts treated her any differently, she joked, well, Crip doesn't even open the doors for me anymore. Sally Ride was born May 26th, 1951 in Los Angeles, California. Both parents were educators, her father a professor of political science, and her mother taught English to foreign students. Weeks before graduating with her PhD, Sally saw an ad for NASA. They were looking for astronauts with science backgrounds for the space shuttle program. Sally eagerly submitted her application and in January 1978, she was accepted in the eighth class of astronauts, just one of six women. In 1978, Ride began a training regiment that included parachute jumping, water survival, weightlessness, radio communications, and navigation, and space shuttle systems and procedures. Her capabilities were quickly apparent. She learned to fly a T-38 jet and participated in the design of the remote mechanical manipulator arm. The device was placed in the shuttle's cargo bay and used to deploy satellites or retrieve those that were to be returned to Earth. George Abbey, NASA's Director of Flight Crew Operations, said at the time, Sally Ride is smart in a very special way. You get people who can sit in a lab and think like Einstein. Sally can get everything she knows together and bring it to bear where you need it. Dr. Ride first flew in space in June 1983 on the seventh shuttle mission aboard Challenger, making her America's first woman in space. She was a flight engineer and mission specialist assisting Commander Robert Crippen and pilot Rick Houck during ascent and landing. For the first time, the remote manipulator arm was used to deploy and retrieve a satellite that flew in formation with the space shuttle for part of the mission. The mission lasted 147 hours and landed on a lake bed runway at Edwards Air Force Base on June 24, 1983. In October 1984, Ride flew on her second shuttle mission aboard Challenger on STS-41G, this time with six others. She deftly operated the remote manipulator arm to deploy a radiation study satellite and to stow the antenna for the shuttle imaging radar system. There were scientific observations of Earth and demonstrating potential satellite refueling also conducted on that mission. Ride was assigned to serve on a third mission, but training was halted when the space shuttle Challenger exploded in January of 1986, killing all seven crew members. She was assigned to serve on the Presidential Commission investigating that accident. The Presidential Commission urged NASA to fix the shuttle's faulty solid rocket booster, initiate sweeping management reforms, and beef up attention to safety However, a recommendation that the agency needed to regain the vitality of the Apollo era was to absorb Dr. Ride's specific talents once the investigation was over. She was assigned to NASA headquarters as special assistant to the administrator for long-range and strategic planning. She was responsible for the creation of NASA's Office of Exploration and produced a report on the future of the space program. The effort became known as the Ride Report. Ultimately, the report recommended NASA establish a permanent lunar base at the start of the 21st century and pursue a Mission to Planet Earth program before pressing on with human exploration of Mars. Retiring from NASA in 1987, Dr. Ride became a professor of physics at the University of California, San Diego and has accepted many positions with various organizations. But she's most passionate about Sally Ride Science, the company she founded in 2001 to make a difference in girls' lives by creating programs to encourage them to pursue math and science and 
can make a difference in society's perception of girls' and women's roles in technical fields. Dr. Ride returned to NASA after the Columbia accident in 2003 to participate as a member of the Columbia Accident Investigation Board. She is the only person to have served on both the Challenger and Columbia Investigation Boards. In 1985, she was inducted into the International Space Hall of Fame. And in 2003, she was the first woman to be inducted into the U.S. Astronaut Hall of Fame for her pioneering role in America's space program. Dr. Sally Ride has earned her place in the National Aviation Hall of Fame.